Hi, everyone. I'm Elaine Quijano. It's good to be with you. Thanks for joining us. Congress has averted a potential financial crisis for now. Last night, the House approved a measure to extend the government's ability to avoid a default. It raises the debt ceiling by $480 billion, just enough to make it to December. No Republicans voted to raise the limit, which President Biden will sign in the coming days. Here's how House Speaker Nancy Pelosi laid out the stakes. The failure to lift the debt limit could result in the loss of up to 6 million jobs, the elimination of $15 trillion in household wealth, and drastic increase in the cost of loans, car loans, mortgages, student loans, credit card bills, and other borrowing. Plus, the Labor Department says inflation rose again in September. The Consumer Price Index is now 5.4 percent higher compared to last year. That's up slightly from 5.3 percent last month. The White House insists it's only temporary. We certainly understood and knew uh, that when we were coming in, when the president was coming into office uh, and he was coming in at a time where we needed to turn the economy back on, where he was coming in at a time where uh, unemployment was high, uh, where wages were down, demand was down, which, as you know, you have once you build up, when demand increases, that can re, uh, re, re, uh, result in an increase in prices, um, that over time, as the economy is turning back on, we'd see some of these transitory effects. That's what we, that's what's been predicted. Uh, that's what we are, have been planning for. Uh, and of course, next year, we expect it to come down as, as outside forecasters are projecting. Earlier, the White House hosted the heads of major U.S. ports and corporations. They're working to address supply chain bottlenecks, leading to product shortages and rising prices. President Biden announced a deal he called a potential game changer. And today we have some good news. We're going to help speed up the delivery of goods all across America. After weeks of negotiation and working with my team and with the major union retailers and freight movers, the ports of Los Angeles, the Port of Los Angeles announced today that it's going to be, begin operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Let's bring in Nicole Killian, Zeke Miller, and Sarah Westwood. Nicole is a CBS News congressional correspondent. Zeke is a CBS News political contributor and White House reporter for the Associated Press. And Sarah is a political and investigative reporter for the Washington Examiner. Welcome. It's good to have you all. Zeke, let me start with you. You know, a lot of people might not realize it, but supply chains impact every American in some way, and especially as we come up on the holiday season. What's behind the pressures building and what does the administration say they're doing to relieve that pressure? It's not just uh, the higher prices that we've seen, uh, whether it be at, at the pump or just everyday consumer goods that we saw uh, the Social Security Administration today uh, increasing the cost of living adju uh, adjustment for, for retirees, uh, the highest level we've seen in decades. Um, it's not just that. It's also the availability of basic goods, the, the delays um, for manufacturing products, um, that are interrupting the economy uh, uh, at, at really every 